Hello everyone, uh, my name is Pradeep. I hope you all can hear me. And I'm here to talk about getting started with Aerospike on Docker. Let me know if you are not able to see my slide. Okay, sorry, that was a minor glitch. Uh, my name is Pradeep. I'm uh, here with Sunil, my colleague, who will be helping out uh, with Q&A. Thank you, Sunil. And uh, let's get started. So uh, what are the key takeaways from this talk? Why should you spend 30 to 40 minutes sitting here listening to this? We'll be focusing on essentially setting up Aerospike as quickly as possible in less than five minutes. And we will start with uh, you know, running Aerospike in a simple container, in a standalone container. And then uh, we'll graduate a little bit further to some Aerospike configurations. And then we'll set up a small cluster. Uh, and then we'll also look at some troubleshooting and monitoring. And to do all this, we will use Docker as a primary building block. Uh, we're not going to do any bare metal installations. Uh, we're not going to focus on uh, installing or building Aerospike here at all. Our focus is on speed because we as developers, we want to start using software as quickly as possible without spending a lot of time in installation. So who am I? Uh, I work in the client services group as an architect. I help customers primarily in the APAC region uh, have to design and uh, you know, architect Aerospike for their specific use cases. So let's get started. So why containers? Uh, why even use them? You know, uh, before uh, a, a while back, we as developers, like we would build software, I would write software, I would build, I would test, I would do everything, and then hand it off to another team, like the QA team or maybe some other team. And the first thing they would come back with is, uh, hey, this software is not running. And immediately you would say that it's running on my laptop. I don't know what's wrong in your environment, right? So we use containers precisely to avoid this, getting into this kind of a scenario, right? Containers are a standardized set of software that help you package and distribute applications without any dependency on client environments. And they're extremely modular, meaning in one container, I can modularly compose multiple applications and their dependencies, even starting with the programming language. Uh, it is by far the quickest means to install, deploy, and distribute applications. Uh, you can use a single machine for multiple container hosts, and you can also use container hosts on multiple machines, and you can orchestrate these containers and deploy at scale at, at, at rapid speed. So I'm not going to go too much into the uh, depths of Docker. That's going to take a whole day. Uh, just give you some basics. Uh, so it's like, uh, uh, think of Docker. I mean, it's the most popular container out there. And also, uh, the, the runtime on which Docker runs is, is a pretty open standard. Uh, it, it, I think it is a graduate of the Cloud Native Computing Foundation now. It is most widely used, uh, even though there are other container applications out there. And it's a very simple process to set up uh, you know, up your application as, as a Docker image. So you essentially write something called a Docker file to create a Docker image. Uh, you publish this image to either a public or a private repo. And now anybody can pull this image and deploy it on their environment provided they have Docker. Right. So you can also use multiple images and then compose them into one, one single image. So with that, let's see how we can, you know, get started with Aerospike. So if you Google for uh, Aerospike and Docker, um, this is what I did. I just joined Aerospike like a couple of months back. 
So I'm pretty new to the, all this. And when I joined, obviously, I just Googled and figured out, hey, can I do this on Docker? And it was not all that straightforward, right? Because I get this instruction saying, hey, here's the command to run Docker, but please don't do this. Uh, you know, use a config file instead and all that. Now, like, I didn't do, I didn't even read these instructions because, I mean, you know, we all skip instructions sometimes. So went ahead and pretty much ran this command. Um, nothing catastrophic happens if you, do, if you do this. All it does is it's going to start AeroSpike in, in a Docker container, and you can verify that, and, you know, that's it. But there is a there is some there are some limitations here, right? We can we got AeroSpike up and running, um, but now what? Uh, so this is a database. I mean, you need to interact with the database. You need to push records. You need to read records. So we need a client at a bare minimum, and uh, we need to know what's going on in the database. I mean, uh, is it is it running at full RAM capacity? Uh, is it even running? So, you know, this is a pretty bare bones command, and which is why the warning came in the first place that, hey, you know, please don't use this. It's, it's pretty useless. So let's see what we can do. Um, we can do a, a, a much better Docker, uh, we can run a much better Docker command. And what this does is, I'll run through this command a little bit in detail. It's letting you specify a config file, as you can see here, right? And this, because you can use a config file now, uh, which means that you are in control of your database. So you can configure where you'll put your log files. You can configure um, pretty much all the uh, AeroSpike goodies can be configured uh, in this configuration file. This command is pretty similar to the previous command, but with a few a few a few additions, right? So you have this minus v option. What this minus v option is telling you is, in, in very simple terms, it's mapping a source directory, which is optero spike, to the destination directory inside Docker. So Docker runs natively on Linux and Windows, uh, on Mac OS if you are using Mac as a developer platform. It runs on something called HyperKit. So it virtualizes a very lightweight Linux kernel on Mac. And it, 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 so this is called, I think, Linux Kit VM. And now with this Linux Kit VM and Hypervisor, uh, we are able to run Docker on Mac uh, as good as you're able to learn, run Docker on Linux. So this minus V option is telling that Optero Spike in the source uh, my, on my source Mac machine is visible inside the container as Optero Spike etc. Which means all my contents of Optero Spike are now inside visible inside the container. Okay. So the name option is uh, the name is optional. You can specify a name. Uh, I've given Aero Spike custom. You can give anything. It's, 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 it's the characters. That's it. And we are, again, using the minus P option, we are mapping the ports on which uh, you know, AeroSpike runs. So if you are new to AeroSpike, I'll just give a primer on these ports. Uh, 3000 is used for uh, all the client communications. All the clients communicate to AeroSpike on this port, and so does the XDR communication. Uh, 3001 is used by our fabric, uh, which uses uh, which is a protocol for intra-cluster communication. 3002 is used for our heartbeat, is used by our heartbeat for, um, sorry, I believe my video is, uh, is a problem. So let me see if I can turn it off. Uh, so I just cut, cut off my video, hope this is okay. So with the minus, uh, uh, sorry, 3002 port is used by the Heartbeat in the mesh configuration. So as you might all know, uh, Heartbeat runs in uh, mesh and multicast. So uh, I believe it's super straightforward to use mesh in uh, the mesh mode in Docker. The multicast is a little more involved. So we'll just focus on the mesh mode here. And uh, 3003 is used for all the info commands. 
So once again, you don't have to expose all these ports. If your intent is to just get the client up and running uh, and, and talk to this Docker container, you can just expose port 3000 and that should suffice. Okay. So now we have a Docker container running um, and we need a client. So again, there is a Docker image, which is our AeroSpike tools image, which will expose all our tools and uh, AQL is our command line tool where, which you can you, you use to connect to our database and do some uh, basic operations. Our, this AQL tool runs on top of our C client. So um, uh, using this, you can do all the operations that you can on, on the database, right? That's it. With just two Docker commands, you now have a full-fledged AeroSpike installation running that is in your control. Uh, you know what to do and uh, you can configure it the way you want. So there is uh, this one caveat. Uh, this, if you look at this option where there is docker inspect minus f network settings dot IP address, we do this because uh, docker uh, simulates an IP address in, in the container and runs on that IP address, which is not visible outside the container. So if a docker, if a second docker container has to communicate with that container, it has to communicate on that IP address and you use this uh, inspect command to uh, know what that IP address is, right? So uh, depending on the configuration file, um, now you can run AeroSpike in uh, you know, potentially three possible configurations, right? You can run it as a pure in-memory database, which is what we, we, this command lets you do. Uh, you can also run AeroSpike in what is known as a hybrid configuration, uh, where data is stored on SSDs and our primary index is stored in, in the memory, right? So this gives a solid persistence option. This is by far our most popular, you know, configuration. You can also use AeroSpike as a pure in-memory database. And uh, you, can, you, you, can, you can specify a file to back up this data at a periodic interval. So this uh, is, is not so popular, but, but your at the flexibility of using this configuration as well. Right. So let's uh, see some of the other commands that you can use from our tools image. Since uh, the AeroSpike tools image is exposed as a Docker container, you can run all the tools commands directly from this container. In essence, you don't have to install any of the AeroSpike ecosystem components on your developer a machine or workstation. Everything you can run from Docker. So very much Docker is a first class citizen for us. So, uh, you know, you, there is no need to install anything. There is no need to build anything. Any tool that you want with AeroSpike is available in Docker. So I'm going to uh, talk a little bit more about our hybrid configuration uh, because this is, uh, you know, what what most of us use. And I'm going to take EC2 as an example uh, to show this. So on EC2, all you need to do is, uh, assuming you have a virtual machine running, you can uh, create a new disk volume. Uh, and once you create a new disk volume, you attach that volume to this running container. Uh, this hardly takes like two minutes and you can specify uh, a, a, you know any reasonable size for the volume and once you attach this volume to the um, to your running vm uh, what you typically do is you immediately go and create a file system on that to use this volume and mount it right here you don't have to do that all you do is you attach this uh, volume to the container and use a simple command lsblk to verify that this volume is visible in the, in the virtual machine, okay? And after you do that, assuming you have Docker uh, installed on this VM, uh, all you need to do is run this command. Again, this command is very similar to the previous commands that we ran, but there is one caveat. Uh, let me just show you the config here. So here, 
if you look at our, I'm, I'm just giving you, uh, showing you the snippet of Aerospy configuration uh, where you uh, specify the device configuration for a specific namespace. This is our default namespace. And all you're doing here is you're specifying the storage engine as device and you're giving the uh, device as dev XPDF. And if you go back to my, to the previous slide, what you're doing is in addition to mapping all your, uh, you know, source directories, you're also mapping device using uh, the device option. You are again, more than welcome to choose a different name. Uh, you can choose XVDF, XVDG, anything, but please make sure that whatever name you use here to map, you're using the same name here in the config file. So uh, the, I have used the default write block size of uh, 128K. Uh, you are more than welcome to change this to one meg or even up to eight megs, I think, uh, depending on uh, if, you're, if you're using the ACT tool to test your uh, uh, you know, SSDs, you can use the recommendation that, uh, that, is, that has come from the tool. And once you do this, you have essentially a hybrid Aerospike running in Docker container. Now, the, the, the greatest advantage here is that if you, for any reason, if you shut off the container and you bring it back, you're not losing any data, right? Whereas in the pure in-memory mode, let's say you have a Docker container up and running, Aerospike in pure in-memory mode, and you, you shut it off, uh, you inserted some data, you shut it off, and you, you brought it back on, it, you will not have the data with you, right? The data won't persist. Uh, the other thing is uh, this name parameter, let's say you run a container and for whatever reason, you're not able to start this container. And if you try to run the same container again, you might get a conflict saying uh, a container by this name already exists. So if that, if that happens, you just have to change the name and a new container will start. So, so far, uh, what we have done is we have started with a very simple uh, Docker installation, which is a pure in-memory uh, container setup. Now, and then we have slowly, uh, sorry, gradually migrated to a slightly more uh, complicated uh, hybrid setup. Now let's see if we can set up a cluster uh, without spending a lot of time. Of course, but the moment you talk about cluster, the first thing that comes to any developer's mind is that, oh no, I have to set up like three machines. Uh, I need to uh, do a whole lot of network configurations and all that. No, absolutely not. And I need to learn Kubernetes or Docker Swarm, which has a very steep learning curve. No, you don't have to do any of that. We can set up a three node cluster on a single machine using just containers. Uh, and I, I've, uh, taken this information from our one of our blog posts that uh, my colleague Lucian has put through. So please uh, refer to this URL if you need more details on this. So all we are doing is we are setting up three containers here. We are starting three containers. And the only difference here, of course, it is starting in the default in-memory mode. You can start it in the hybrid mode if you want um, or in, 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 the, in the third mode as well. Now you might be wondering, uh, where is this Aerospike server? How is it starting from uh, uh, you know, pure in-memory mode without any configuration file? I'm not specifying any config file here. The reason for that is because the server image already has a default config file, and that config file has the in-memory option configured. That's the reason it, it starts in the default mode. So the only change here is what you can see is you're mapping different ports in the second and third container. Now, the reason for this is because, like I said, we are running on one machine, so we are sharing the host IP address, because of which you need to use different source ports to map the second and third containers. Again, you're more than welcome to choose any port. I have just chosen 6,000 and 4,000 for simplicity's sake. Uh, but you do have to now open all the ports because we are forming a cluster, right? Now, okay, by, by running these three commands, you have 
three independent containers running. Now, how do you bring them together into a cluster? For that, you need to use the tip command from, uh, sorry, the tip option in, in AS info. The tip option or the tip command is used to add a node into uh, a mesh cluster in Docker, into a mesh cluster and not just in Docker. Sorry. So uh, because we are using the mesh mode here, we will we can simply use this command to add the nodes into uh, the containers, uh, sorry, into the first container and you have a cluster running. Again, you need to know what IP addresses the, each of these containers are running on. Uh, so you run this uh, AS info service command. You get all the service, uh, sorry, all the IP addresses, and you add the second and third nodes using tip into the first node, and you have a three node cluster running, which you can again verify using the ASADM uh, tool, uh, which again, you, it just comes as a container on Docker. Uh, you don't need to install this tool at all. And you can verify that you have a three node cluster running. Uh, so agreed that this is not like a real cluster uh, with multiple machines, but it still lets you try out and experiment with the clustering abilities of Aerospike without having to spend an inordinate amount of time uh, in the uh, you know uh, networking and multiple machine setup. So with that, let's just look at a simple client application. Uh, and how you can create a Docker image of this application and bundle the Aerospike image with the Docker image so that you have one, you know, one, one, one image that you can deploy anywhere um, to, for your application to run. So I'm going to take the example of a simple Python app. I'm not going to uh, go into the app details, uh, but what I'll tell you uh, is I'll show you the Docker file this is how simple it is to get a, a simple Python app in the Docker container. Right? So all you're saying is, I, I'm saying from Python 3, which means that I'm going to use the Python 3 image uh, for my application. So I don't need to depend on Conda. I don't need to depend on any of the other uh, installations on the on the you know target machines. And I'm running a, a pip install to install all my dependencies, of course, including Aerospike. Uh, and then I'm copying the source uh, files into the container directory. I'm exposing the port 5000 because that's the default port on which Flask runs, and I'm running this command. Now, this Docker composition is a very simple process. All you're saying is, I'm using this docker compose.yaml, and for whatever reason, it has to be this. It has to be docker-compose.yaml. It can't, it can't be some any other file name. So I'm saying that I have two services, web and Aerospike. Of course, Aerospike, I'm just using the Aerospike server image. And I'm, again, exposing the volumes. I'm mapping the volumes because I need to use a configuration file. Uh, I'm exposing only the client port. I don't need any other port because I'm not using the cluster here. And I'm running the ASD command with the config file. Now, uh, the link directive tells web that there is the, your link to the Aerospike image. Now, in version 3.8 and above, you can uh, also use the depends clause, which means that your Aerospike container will start first, and then the web container will start. But I'm not able to use that version on, on my Mac for whatever reason. So once you do that, once you have the Docker compose uh, file run. All you need to do is docker compose up minus D, and you will have both the containers running. Now, because of the dependency, you might not be able to, your Python container might not run. So all you need to do is run the docker compose command again. Again, the, only the Python container will start. Suppose you make any code changes, uh, you need to use uh, docker compose build, because if you just run docker compose up, it's not going to uh, re reload the changes. With that, let's just look at some troubleshooting. Uh, so, like the first thing we all do is we'll check PS and see if the process is running. Similarly, you have Docker PS, which will list all the running processes. You also have Docker PS uh, hyphen A, which will list all the containers uh, which are running or otherwise. So, if a container didn't start for whatever reason, you can 
go in, you, you can figure out that, okay, I have this container, but it has not started. Docker logs will get you a rudimentary log of the running container. Uh, it's like a tail minus 50 or something like that. So you don't get full visibility into the log, but you do, uh, you do get to know what's going on to some extent. However, we need full visibility into the container. Without that, it's pretty useless. So how do we do this? We use the docker exec command. And in, in interactive mode, if we execute a shell into this container, uh, you're inside the container now. So you can look at your log files. You can look at your config files uh, to figure out what's gone wrong in the container and then make those corrections. This, uh, this exec command also lets you get inside a container that has that is not running. So for whatever reason your container didn't start, you can use this uh, command, get inside the container, look at your config files, and figure out if there is anything wrong. Uh, you can also use Docker stats that will give you like the basic stats about the container, like RAM, CPU usage, and all that. But primarily, these, this exec command is super helpful because you now have a shell that you can, you know, look inside the container and, uh, you know, figure out what's wrong. I have made innumerable config mistakes, which I have corrected by using this command. Um, so this is super helpful. So with that, I am done. Uh, I'm happy to take any questions. Sunil and I will answer any questions uh, that you guys have. All the material uh, that I've used in my talk, the snippets of all the files that you saw, including the Python app, is available on this GitHub repo. Uh, please feel free to download this or use this. I believe this deck will be available in our Summit website. And this talk is also being recorded. It will be available after one hour has elapsed from this talk. I also believe we have a happy hour uh, towards the end of the day. So request everyone to attend this happy hour if you can. And that's it. I'm done. Let me just see if there are any questions. Um, I can see a few questions. Uh, so hang on. So how do you create a volume on Mac OS for the Docker container to use? You know, I have absolutely no idea. I never tried this because I was using EC2 for doing all my hybrid configurations. I will certainly get back to you on this in the Slack channel. When I, uh, there is another question here. Um, does the Aerospike Docker image contain a Linux distribution? Yes, yes. So the uh, the Aerospike server Docker image has a Linux distribution built in. It, it builds on top of that. That's true. What are some of the cons of using Docker? Uh, I think one of the major con is unable to do efficient monitoring and troubleshooting because the shell, the, the kernel that uh, the Docker exposes is a very lightweight kernel. So monitoring is restricted. You don't have the full-fledged access to all the hardware that you can monitor. So that's one of the major cons. And I believe there is some speed issues as well. Uh, there are some speed issues with Docker. I have never personally experienced with Aerospike. Maybe with other applications, there are some speed issues. So that could be another con. Um, and uh, what else? I believe this, if there is a blue tick, which means it is already answered, I suppose. Okay, I don't see any other questions. So thank you everyone uh, for attending this session. Oh, wait a minute, there is one question. Can we create a cluster with Aerospike CE Docker images? Yes, absolutely. 
absolutely i have used only the ce docker image uh, in all my uh, you know in all the snippets that you see it's all the ce docker image i have not used the enterprise image at all and uh, let's see is there a newer one if I want to create my own image for Docker, yes, absolutely. So you can you can use the Docker file and specify, like I showed. Uh, I don't know if I can go back to that to that part. Yeah. So let me push this to the audience. So here I have my source application in this directory wherever i'm having this docker file and i'm building an image uh, using this docker file you can use docker build in this directory and you will have your own docker image and you can use docker push to push that image to the uh, public docker repo uh, if you don't want to push your image to a publicly accessible docker repo you can also create your own repo which is limited to your organization or to your network and push the image to that to that repo as well um, next question can you point us to the stepwise instruction uh, yes so it is on my on my github repo i have put together a readme if uh, if there is any uh, clarification needed from that readme i'm always available on the slack channel uh, you can ask me any questions on our Slack channel, and I'll be happy to answer any of those questions. I'll be hanging out here for at least another couple of hours, even though I'm in Bangalore. And uh, there's another question. When I try to create a cluster on two different servers, I get this error, error while binding to a specific IP address, cannot assign a requested address. Uh, this could... Oh, if you are using two different servers, this you need you need an orchestration platform such as Kubernetes or Docker Swarm. What I showed was on one machine, so I don't know if I'm understanding this question correctly. So I, I'll take this question in the Slack channel if if it's all right. And uh, any other questions that I've missed? I don't. Believe so. What kind of any kind of PMM is out of question? I don't know. I would assume it's out of question because this is so. So a Docker is not virtualizing the hardware. Uh, so I don't know what this out of question means. So you can still probably run on a on a PMM processor because Docker is not virtualizing any hardware. Uh, a container is only virtualizing software so uh, it, it, it's sort of transparent from the hardware um, so PMM should still work but I'm not sure honestly that's that these are some great questions I think I have a, I'm learning more from this presentation and I think uh, we have seven more minutes I'll be here uh, to take more questions if they are coming through so let's just give a minute more and then I'll probably end the session after a minute if I don't see any other questions Okay. Any Splunk integration available in the image? I don't believe so. Uh, this is purely a server image. We don't have any of the integrations in the image that I've uh, shown here in our Aerospike server image. Um, but that's a very good point. We can definitely release Docker image. I believe we have Docker images for our connectors I'm not totally sure but if if we need to do one for Splunk we'll definitely do this 
do you prefer docker docker orchestration to kubernetes honestly i i don't i don't have a preference i i presume when you say docker orchestration you are talking about docker swarm i have no idea i mean i i i default to kubernetes uh, just because i think it's more popular and also i believe it has more features than docker swarm but it's it's a whole another learning curve man Okay, great. Thank you so much. Uh, let me see if I have left any other question unanswered. Oh, is Docker recommended for production deployments? Uh, I, so I mean, I believe there is there is one one issue with with Docker, the one configuration flag or something that we need to be cognizant about. Sunil, can you can you jump in and answer that if you can? Um, sorry, what is the perfect question you want me to answer? Is Docker recommended for production deployments, and are there any gotchas? Um, actually, there are some customers actually trying Docker Swarm uh, in production. The main use case is actually um, kind of splitting the resources uh, across different use cases. So, where they want to put additional controls. Uh, in the on the same machine, so um, Docker also is improving leaps and bounds in terms of uh, performance, uh, ability to use uh, raw devices, uh, ability even now I think um, uh, it can even do. I'm sorry, forget about that. But yeah, so I think it is definitely maturing um, towards using in production. Awesome, thank you, Sunil. I'm just going through the questions. Uh, I, I don't think I've missed anything. Uh, stepwise instruction, definitely my repo and Slack channel, if there are any other questions. Splunk integration, surely we'll take it up. Uh, that's it. Great. Thank you, everyone. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to end it uh, well before 40 minutes. Thank you so much for spending time with us. and. Please uh, do make it convenient to attend our happy hour as well. Thank you.